Hey guys, this is Jim WT1W and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I want to share with you something I bought recently. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this with my own funds. This is the Pico APRS. And this is a neat little device that does APRS and a whole bunch of other functions. The device itself is fairly small. You can see it's about three inches long by about an inch and a half wide, two inches, something like that. The uh, device comes in a small box. The device comes with a charging cable. It does not come with an antenna. You will have to get an antenna on your own. I bought this used off of eBay from a gentleman and he included two of these style antennas. According to the documentation, they say you should use a, a real HT style antenna. Or if you're using this in a vehicle, for example, you probably want to connect it to an external antenna for better reception. What does this thing do? Well, it does APRS. It does everything with APRS that you can think of to do with APRS. It is a receive-only eye gate, number one. Number two, it's a digipeter. Number three, it is a TNC, a KISS TNC, and you can use it through USB, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi for the TNC function. So you could use it with, for example, an app on a mobile device like APRS.fi on an iPhone and use this as your TNC and use the app on your phone to beacon APRS and messages and all that kind of thing. So you don't have to tie up a VFO on your radio, for example. This is Wi-Fi. Uh, you can update it over Wi-Fi. As I mentioned, it also will TNC that way. And it has Bluetooth. The coolest feature, of this besides all the neat APRS stuff it does is it is a VHF transceiver. Yes, indeed, it is a full VHF transceiver. I say full, it transmits, it receives on two meters. The power output is low. It is a half watt or one watt. And again, your mileage is gonna vary depending on what kind of antenna system you have it hooked to. Obviously, since it does APRS, you can also, it also has GPS built into it, so it will keep updated with your location. You can also hard code your GPS coordinates in it if you're using it in a fixed location, you know, so you don't have to fool with worrying about the GPS and use an extra battery. So it does a whole lot of functions, and I want to run through kind of what it does. This device was created and is um, sold at a, several sites. Tanner Schenker, DB1NTO, is the inventor of the Pico APRS. And this is sold uh, at DX Engineering here in the United States and elsewhere, I'm sure. So with all that being said, I want to take a quick run through and show you some of the functions that this does. The device itself has a removable battery, and you can order a spare battery uh, online from the APRS the the uh, Pico APRS website. You can also order a desktop style USB charger. The device will charge off of USB-C and it will run simultaneously off of USB-C and it specifically says that in the documentation. I have been using this in my vehicle as a eye gate and I have my radio in the truck on the second VFO doing um, APRS beaconing. And it works well for that because it obviously is transmitting all that. We don't have a tremendous amount of coverage for APRS here where I live. So with something like this in your vehicle, obviously I'm going to have pretty much continuous coverage. Since it's Wi-Fi, it can connect to your Wi-Fi in your vehicle if you have onboard Wi-Fi, or it can connect to your phone and you can tether it that way. So right now this is in... Um, internet APRS and Wi-Fi mode. And in that mode, and let me share this with you fairly quickly. So I have this in internet APRS mode and Wi-Fi at this time. And in this mode, you can also, it has a built-in web server so you can configure and save frequencies in here and use that as a scanner if you wanted to, uh, or just to change frequencies if you were using it as a standard VHF transceiver. You can see I've got three frequencies saved in here. Let's take a look at some of the other functions of the device. So when we go into the settings, everything you can do with this device, this is the on button right here. You press and hold that. That's also your transmit button. But everything else you control through this thumb wheel uh, joystick looking dingus in the middle here. So the menu is a right 
a right click and that gives us our basic menu options. We can set our mode and various other settings. SOS mode, we'll talk about that in a second. We can pull up our last heard APRS data, which I don't have anything because I just turned this on to do the video. This will exit the menu. This is to modify our GPS settings or to show us satellites that it's picked up. We can also turn on and off our Bluetooth. Here's our Wi-Fi settings. You go in there and you can tell it which Wi-Fi station you want. I can have receive only Wi-Fi APRS, which is what I've got turned on right now. And of course the web configuration, when you click that, it brings up a web server and you can get that web page I just showed you if you wanna save a bunch of stuff in there, which is a lot easier than typing it in on this screen. So let's jump out of that. Let's go back to our menu. Um, this is the last weather data that you might've received via APRS. This is the messaging screen. So from here, you can see receive messages, you can respond to them, you can create a message, you can set a bulletin for yourself, and you can do all of that through this keypad here, this little directional dingus. Good luck with reading that and typing a message. I'd have to really, really want to send a message, but you can do it. And then the last thing here is the actual radio settings. And this is useful because this device will transmit at one watt on VHF or APRS. So you can also set it to half watt, which is what I've got it in now, which obviously is going to extend your battery life. A half a watt with this small antenna, you know, you're not going to get very far with either your APRS transmissions or your VHF regular voice transmissions, but it will save battery. Of course, we can change our bandwidth to narrow or wide, and we have FM noise cancellation. So that covers the basic settings there. SOS mode, which I'm not going to turn on, will put will send out a message over. It changes the mode to APRS. It sends out an emergency message to APRS. It opens up transmit receive on the radio on the APRS frequency and continually sends that emergency message and lets you audio, audio monitor the APRS frequency if you're in an emergency situation. So we don't want to push this unless we've got an actual sitch. We're not going to push it. But that's a swank feature. So if we go into the settings menu, we have, of course, stuff we can do with the device itself, the screen brightness. We can check for a software update. And if you're in Wi-Fi mode, it will check and see if there's a firmware update, download it and install it. We can turn on GPS power saving, key beeps, what units we want, metric or imperial, our current time offset, and then of course the device info, which tells us the firmware hardware versions. That's those basic functions. If we go back one more time and we go into device mode, this is where we can set the mode that the device actually is operating in. So in APRS mode, this acts like your radio, it beacons APRS. No eye gate, nothing else. If it's receive eye gate, it is a receive only eye gate, which is normally how I use it in my truck. Check our GPS status here, turn it on or off. Of course, I'm not gonna get GPS in the house. We can have it perform as a KISS TNC. I have tested this, this works great. On iOS, on Apple phones, there is an app called APRS up APRS.fi that will use this as its TNC. So you can absolutely beacon message, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from your phone, keyboard, or a iPad and use this as your TNC. So that kind of gives you extended functionality over the device itself. FM voice, which is going to be like you're talking on an HT, and we're going to look at that in a second. FM voice and Wi Fi only APRS. And then, of course, it will also act as a digipeter. So those are all the functions that are built into this thing. Let's jump over to FM Voice. It's going to tell us it's starting the radio module. You can see we're on 146.52. All right, I want to do a quick demo of the VHF transceiver function. The device has the four-way dongle here, dingus, and volume up and volume down is achieved by that. If we go to set over here, on the right side, we can change our power. We can also look at our saved channels that way. And then we'll go back here. We can scan with this. I have not tried scanning with this. 
if you want to scan by a scanner, I, I can't imagine this is going to be fast enough to matter. And then down here, we can set our transmit power to one watt or half watt. And of course, our squelch and our squelch is on one. If we turn it off, well, if I did it the right way, squelch, press, oh, that's up and down because there's a little up and down arrow right there. Squelch is off. We're going to set that to one for now and then close. And that takes us back out to the transceiver menu. And this should work. So what I've done is I have my 9700 here, which has an outside antenna. I tried doing this with the 5D, and it's a lot of feedback, and it overwhelms the front end of this thing, just keying up on low power on the 5D. So the 9700 has got an outside antenna, and it attenuates it enough that it doesn't launch the thing into Mars. And I'm going to take my mic off and put it up here by this. Whiskey Tango 1 Whiskey, testing 1, 2, 3, 4. Whiskey Tango 1 Whiskey, testing 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that worked just fine. And I'm going to do the same thing and hold the mic up. Hold the mic up by the 9700. Whiskey Tango 1 Whiskey, 1, 2, 3, 4, testing 1, 2, 3, 4. So that got it. It works fine. Is it loud enough to hear in a crowd? Probably not. So if we change our modes and we go to receive only eye gate, it'll connect to my local internet, and it is now an eye gate. All right, I've set my FT5D into APRS, and I'm gonna do a manual beacon. And if you watch this, you can see I've already done it. It updates, and it is rebroadcast in my APRS over the internet. So it functions as an eye gate. If we change it to DigiPeter mode, DigiPeter mode is not going to do a whole lot for me because there's nothing close by that's going to pick it up. But it will work in DigiPeter mode. And I just got a message on the 5D that it came up. So let's beacon back. And it did it. And of course, it's updating the 5D screen as these two talk to each other. Now, if you use it as a TNC, you have uh, several options here. It will TNC over USB-C. Let me plug my power back in because this battery is not very charged up. You can use it as a TNC over USB, over TCP, Internet, your, so your local LAN. Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy. So let me fire up my phone and connect to APRS.FI. TNC, connect TNC. So now I've got it in KISS mode. And you can see here on my phone that I am connected to Pico APRS as a TNC. And we should see messages. If I beacon with the radio. So it's functioning as a TNC. Now, the beauty of this is with the, uh, the app enabled on the phone, this is my TNC for connecting. And then I can use this to broadcast my, um, APRS messages as I go. So if you're traveling, for example, that completely frees up your radio from using a VFO, for example, for doing APRS. I love this. This particular setup is, is just cool. It is absolutely swank. Uh, I'm going to be going to Dayton in a couple months. I'm probably going to use this setup as opposed to beaconing APRS on my uh, FTM 500 in the truck. And that way I can have one VFO for VHF call and one VFO for, um, for example, Toads Digital on the FTM 500. So that is an excellent set of functionality that that thing does. So we go back in the menu. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily go through all these modes, but you can see that we have a lot of different functionality. And again, we can use it as a DigiPeter, so on and so forth. And then to power it off, we bring up the menu. We hit the center dingus and that turns it off there's your charge status to turn it on you press and hold this side button okay here's a quick view of the user manual we're not going to go through all of this the documentation on this device is outstanding it's a very well written manual that clearly explains how all the different modes work and the settings you need to change or whatever um, i mentioned that this does not come with an external battery charger, but you can order that as well as a secondary battery. 
It does come with the battery built in and a small USB-C cable for charging. You can charge this from a PC or from a power bank, which is what I've been running it on today for this video. And then here's some recommended antennas they give you in there for that. It uh, walks through the screen here and shows us what all the different display items are that you can see. The screen, as you can see on the camera, was very easy to read. It's a little small, but again, this device is tiny. This screen is about one inch diagonal. So this thing is not very large at all. And then Tanner Schenker, the developer of this, goes through all the settings and how to change everything. There's the five-way button that I affectionately refer to as a dingus. You, of course, have an on-screen keyboard for sending messages. I don't know how much I'd want to talk to anybody sending tiny text messages this way, but you can do it. And then he goes through each of the modes and shows you the specific screens and what it'll look like. Then in detail for all the functions of the menu and all the setup information, screen brightness, et cetera, et cetera what each function does and how to do any setup or prep work for that specific function. And it's a, overall, it's a very nice device. The device runs about $400. All right, we're done with, uh, we're done with the manual there. All right, guys, that's going to about wrap it for this video. This is $400 available at DX Engineering. Again, link in the description below. I really enjoy this. I think this thing has a lot of functionality that in my opinion makes APRS more useful and a whole lot more user friendly than just trying to use it on your HT or your mobile radio or, or whatever. I will say this and I'm sure somebody is gonna get upset about it. Even with the tiny keyboard, sending a message on this is a whole lot easier than using the front of your FTM 500 or your FT5D or insert other radio here. Those are the two I have, so I specifically know about them. You know, this isn't the greatest interface in the world because it's small, but it's still an easier way to send a message, I think, than, than on the front end of either one of those radios. That's it. Guys, if you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. As always, thank you for watching 73. Have a good one.